Talk show. My name is Ryan. I'm the host of the program. It's our Misha Barton Gets a DUI edition of Ryan's Rock Show. Today we're going to be speaking to a band from Northern California. They're called Strata. For your weekly essential, be sure to send us your comments, your questions, and or your suggestions to ryansrockshow.com. Now I had a chance to meet up with Eric, the singer from Strata recently. Here's what he had to say. I live right down the street from eBay. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, like the actual eBay. Like, That's great. Yeah. That's great. So you go down and like you drive by and you see this big eBay building. It's not. A, it's like a city. It's like a little it's like a city. Oh, it's a pretty large lot that they have. Are you serious? It's really it's like that big. No, it's yes, I'd say it's like it's like a like bigger than the property that a mall would be on. It's just huge. Yeah. So how did you not get into computers and get into music? Um, I did. That's actually where I met. Uh, our bass player, Hrog, oh, yeah? was we were working together at a startup back in 2000 90, or 99 actually. So I was involved in some of it. Like what were you doing with computers? Graphic design. Oh yeah, like Photoshop and everything. Yeah. Like what? What were you? Who were you working for? What were you? Uh, we had a couple little companies that we that we started up there. Uh, you know that almost got bought by people and we almost got like you know we were almost the success story yeah but it didn't happen oh really and then so so strata came along or no we're so we i met harag that way and that's how we started playing together and oh, okay. ryan and i met each other around the same time and started playing so yeah. how old are you i'm 18. <laughs> That, hey, I'm 29. 29? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that makes a little bit more sense. So when you were a kid and you were growing up, was music something that you wanted to pursue? Um, not at first. I wanted to write, and I wanted to. I used to win little. At school, I'd win contests for like best story and you know things like that. Really, I've always wanted to write, but I didn't start wanting to be in a band until I was probably like 17, 16. Really. Wow, like most kids are like 12 and want to be in band. No, I just never really considered it until, wow. I don't know. So did you go to shows a lot when you were like a kid though? Yeah, I started to, but I, I went to a lot of like really mainstream stuff when I first started. Like my first show was Oasis and uh, oh, yeah. Oasis and Third Eye Blind, I think was like my first big show I ever went to. Dude, I was, Third Eye Blind was huge when I was in 8th grade, yeah. it, but it was badass though. Like, They're pretty cool. You know, and like Oasis is pretty cool too, man. So like that was the first show you went to was. It's the first big one I remember, but I've been to other ones before that. But. My first show was Billy Ray Cyrus when I was five. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and now like Hannah Montana tour. Dude, or dude yeah, that was it actually. Wow. And it was it was pretty sad when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. But like I just can't believe like looking back on it like I don't know that was like what 15 years ago that Hannah Montana is like so huge. Like she played the Staples Center and like sold it out or something like. Yeah. Time. You know what's funny is I I hear about I hear her name probably like twice a day. I've really? never once heard her music. I don't even know what she's about. Really? But it, people talk about her a lot, apparently. Yeah. Even when you're on tour, you people will just mention Hannah Montana? Yeah. Last, <laughs> last night, Sonny did. I don't know what really? he was, what, in what context, but he said something about it. And then on the plane from Chicago this morning, I saw something about her. Maybe Sonny listens to Hannah Montana. She nice. doesn't tell anybody. Heavily influenced by her, probably. Actually, I interviewed the guys from, from first to last mm -hmm. the other day. And I think they said he does listen to Hannah Montana, dude. So probably that's did. Probably, yeah, he probably does. <laughs> so, so you said you met your dude. Um, for, we yeah, all just uh, met in town. You all met in town. Yeah, just friends. That's cool. So, up in Northern California, were you big fans of like Deftones and, and yeah, bands like that? Absolutely. Did you see the Deftones when you were growing up? Um, so I'm at a place called the Cactus Club. Years and years and years I've ago. heard of the Cactus Club. Um, that's gone now. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, everyone in Northern California is like, you have to be into the death tones. If you skated yeah. growing up, if you were a skater and you, you know, at that age, mm -hmm. it's like a given. So what's it like touring with Team Sleep now? It's pretty cool. It's actually my favorite tour I've ever been on, I think. Like, really? Yeah, because I, I love, I love Sonny's music a lot, and mm -hmm. I get to sing a song with him on stage, and, uh, and then just seeing Chino walking around is really weird. For me, still like even really? I've had a lot of conversations with them. I've gotten busted by the cops with them because we were skateboarding in Austin. It was it was me and Chino and Sunny. We all got busted together, and that was like just one of the most surreal moments in my life. Was like having the cops sit us down and yell at us and looking over and Chino's on his bike. I'm like, <laughs> it's like weird. That takes me crazy. back to like 16. 
Yeah? Like, when you were 16, did you ever think that you'd be touring with Deftones? Or not Deftones, Team Sleep or Kino? No. Yeah. How'd you hook up with this tour, though? With Team um, Sleep? We, were, we played a show with the Deftones and Social Distortion mm -hmm. in New York, and it was like a radio thing and a big, dirty racetrack. Oh, yeah. It's like a big festival. And I walk up to him and I gave him a copy of my book and a copy of the CD and I said, you know, I want you to check this out. And he took it and kind of like put it down, like, okay, cool, I'll check it out. And then I, I think I might have freaked him out. But like, you know, right? Yeah. Okay. And I, I grabbed him and I said, seriously, check it out, please, because I wouldn't be in a band if, like, right now if you didn't do what you do. Yeah. And he took that pretty seriously because we ended up on this tour. So, so he pretty cool. called you up or how did that go? Well, he called the, our agents and stuff, I guess. Um, so what was it like when you when your agents were like, hey Chino called? That was one of the only. That was one of the only times I think that I've ever heard our whole band actually like cheer. Really? Like, like everyone jump up and get all excited. So like, did they call you in a room and they're like, guys, we gotta talk to you? Well, we have little conference calls and stuff when we're sitting at home not touring. We have we keep in contact with management and on one of those calls he keep told us about it and. It's the most excited I've been in a long time. Really? Like, what's that? What's that feel like? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just cool, like. Cause it just feels good to. I mean, we've been on some tours that I didn't even want to go on. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the bands, or I didn't, you know, feel good about it. And this tour is awesome. What were some of your tougher tours? I'd rather not say. I don't want to hurt anybody. Like, I don't want to say any bad things about people. But there's just, there have been tours where we played with bands that I didn't have any respect for, but we were opening. Yeah. And that doesn't. When you work your whole life and you put your heart into something, and then you're like in an opening position, it feels good if you respect the people you're opening for. Like if you grew up listening to them in this case. You know. But if it's somebody that you think is kind of a joke and you're opening for them, it, it's kind of hard to get up in the morning. You know, it's weird. Yeah. Well, when I listen to your music. It reminds me a lot. Well, I don't want to say Incubus, but do you guys listen to them? Um, I don't really. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that and like Caddisfly, a little bit. I, I guess I could see that. Yeah. So when you guys play with like bands that are heavier, do you feel like you stick out like a sore thumb? Do you think words take it differently? Live, we're a lot heavier than we are on the record. Mm -hmm. So last night we played with Silver Chair and Silver Sun Pickups, and we were. The heavy band on the bill. The silver check? Yeah. <laughs> What's Daniel Johns like? He was nice. Yeah? yeah. Did you meet his hot wife? No. You didn't? Uh, he was just kind of, he was wearing like MC Hammer pants <laughs> and a long fur coat <laughs> and he was drunk and it was, I don't know, he was, was interesting. So it wasn't really like you got to chill with him, he was pretty drunk. Not really. I kind of chilled with um, the singer for Brian for um, Silver Sun Pickups. He was cool. Oh, okay. He actually dedicated a song to me. Oh, that was very sweet. Oh, yeah? That's awesome. What city was this? Chicago. Oh, and then you just flew here? Yeah. We l we canceled one, we left one show, the Phoenix show, and we went and played a radio show and came back. Oh, okay. Well, do all the guys live up in Northern California, or? Yeah, we all live within, like, five miles of each other. Well, when you guys were, well, I guess we'll back up to, like, when you guys first got together, when we first got signed, because... You're on Wind Up, mm -hmm. and I was reading something about like Drowning Pool and how they came into the picture. I guess you gave them a demo or something. Um, Can you explain a that's little bit about that? Yeah, we were recording somewhere, and there was this really loud, scary man at the studio. His name is Jason, and I guess he, I mean, we didn't really hang out with him that much, but I guess he liked us enough to pass a demo over to when he, I guess, when Dave from Downing Pool died, um, Jason ended up taking his place and passed our demo to the label when he got there. Yeah. And to be honest, like, the music that that label put out when we signed with them was, like, definitely not a selling point. Like, none of us are fans of Creed, Creed or Evan Essence or any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but what we did like about them was the fact that they seemed to, like, give their bands a chance for a while. You know? Like, uh, they keep bands for years and years without how some we've seen our friends get dropped before their record even comes out sometimes really so they you know we, hey, we got signed and they go somewhere and they record and they finish it and then the label drops them without yeah. releasing it and it's just like we didn't want that to happen when you see your friends getting dropped like that does that put pressure on you because I mean wind up it's kind of a they distribute through like 
Sony yeah, label, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty much as close to a major label as you can get without it being owned by, like... Because, I mean, most labels are, like, there's this board of directors and their shareholders, and they sell light bulbs and baby lotion and uh, microwaves and CDs. Yeah, yeah it's like this big company so huge that music is really not important to them. And they see a band losing money and they cut it, you know, they drop it the same way, like, they drop it. Uh, you ever Google yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you read feedback or, or you know, it hurts comments, really. It hurts really bad. Does it? To be, I'll be completely honest. Like, you, I get really a lot of messages on MySpace, and I get a lot of like, so a lot of people say really nice things, mm -hmm. and they all are really appreciated. It's really great, and I love it. But at the same time, like that one bad thing someone will say will piss me off so bad. Can you give me an example of what someone said to you? That's, it that used to make you. me really mad if people just pop up on AIM and say like, hey, your band sucks, and, I just, and I'd go off on them. And then yeah. after I'd say every mean thing I possibly could to them, they'd say, oh, I was just messing with you, I'm a fan. And I would say, well, fuck you, I don't want you as a fan if you're going to treat people like that. Really? And eventually I just decided like, people can say what they want, I'm not even going to answer anymore, like whatever. What but, about your other guys? How did they... I don't know if they get it as bad as I do. We don't really, like, that's the thing, we don't really talk about the band. Really? Like, we're friends, we talk about other stuff. I heard you guys watch 24 a lot. Adrian, our drummer does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I was thinking, like, you guys all get together and watch 24, like, no, in no. the band? <laughs> when we're in the band, we just have these weird conversations that like, don't have anything to do with music. Well, I was talking to Harag about, um, I read a lot of biology books and stuff, mm -hmm. and we talk about trying to define perception and there's this trick you can do with I can show it to you if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I want to see it. Well, if there, there's everything that you're looking at in your whole life is this like reality that your mind has constructed for you uh -huh. and it has a lot of power and when you look like just move your eyeballs around and everything kind of stays still but you can you can move your eyes but the world stays still, right? Mm -hmm. um, so your eyes moving and the world is staying there. Um, your, what is your eye controlled eye? Your mind? Your brain is controlling a muscle that's controlling your eye, right? Yeah. So if you take your finger and you move your eye, nothing's really different except how the eye is moving. But the whole world moves with your eye when you do it, instead of staying still, like when you move your eye with your brain, instead of your finger. Uh -huh. And the reason it does that is because when your brain tells your eye to move, it's also sending a message like in software almost to your, to your brain to tell it to keep everything still while you look around. It's like, I'm about to move the eye to the right, so keep everything still while I do it. But yeah. when you're going like this, your mind's not sending that signal. That's weird. It's weird. It's a strange thing, but it, it's, if you have like 12 hours to kill in a van, it's pretty interesting. So you guys talk about a lot of weird stuff like that then. You ever talk about death? Yeah. That's something that like... It's a really beautiful part of life, isn't it? Do you think it is? Yeah. Correct. Do you ever, when you think about death, what do you think? Do you think it hurts? Mm -hmm. Do you think it feels good? I think that, um, does it scare you? No. Really? It absolutely does not. I Explain mean, that to me. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not afraid of anything. I'm definitely yeah. afraid of stuff. And dying would kind of suck if I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, it doesn't, I, I, I think that it's really, you can live a really beautiful life if you just believe that this is the only one you have. I think where we mess up is where we think that there's another one after this and that it doesn't matter what we do right now because there's this other one after. Yeah. And if you just, if we all raised our kids and said, you know, every day is important, treat people well, be nice, you know, be as happy as you can because this is the only life you get, then I think everyone would be a lot happier, like the world would be a better place. So what about your personal beliefs? Where do you think you go after you die? I don't think there's a you anymore to go anywhere. So you think that's, is that just it? Or? I think we're just done, yeah. And I think it's, I think it's great. It makes this life that much more limited edition. Yeah. You know, every day you have. So just, I think it's important. So does it feel like it was before you weren't here, do you think? That's kind of a funny quote. Um, I don't know who said it, but you did just fine in the eternity before your life. You'll do just fine after. Like, you didn't exist before you existed, yeah. and you're not going to when you don't. It makes a lot of sense. It's hard to grasp, I think, because... Cause we're, too, we're too conceited. We're too full of ourselves as a species to think that we can't keep going after we die, I think. I think that's why we all need to, we need to believe that, yeah. I think it's really, it's nice to not believe that. 
And I heard you have a book because you well you mentioned that you gave the book to Chino. Yeah. And it's about is that like poetry and stuff in it or something. Or I like, don't like explain a little bit about your book. I don't like the word poetry, but it's um, try to tell the biggest story I can with the fewest words. Yeah. And so I mean, in that sense, and like the formatting of it, I guess, is a poetry format. But it's just like short stories and stuff. What are the short stories? Like, can you give me a summary? One of them. Yeah. You just have to read. <laughs> yeah. What's it just, called? It's called Coma Therapy. Where can people get it? Uh, on my MySpace page. That's it. MySpace page. And Amazon.com, but they ripped me off. Really? Why? Did they take like seventy percent. They take so much. It's crazy. <laughs> I paid to print it myself because okay. I didn't. I didn't want anybody telling me what I can do with it. Mm-hmm. I guess. So I did it myself. And when you order one, I'm the person that writes your address on the envelope and puts the stamp on it. Like it's all my own thing. What are the responses that you've been getting from that? I sold out of my first run ten times faster than I expected to. Really? So that's pretty good feedback. And it's in the second printing now. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. It just feels good to do something on my own that doesn't have to anybody like attached to it. Well, what else do you do? Because you seem pretty, pretty in tune with yourself and seem like you got a pretty well-rounded... I just like to... Thank you. But I just yeah. like to read and um, I quit drugs and I quit drinking and I quit smoking and I like kind of just... I'm kind of addicted to learning stuff now. How long has it been since you... Are you totally sober now? Yeah. yeah. A year and a half. I have a couple of prescriptions, but a year and a half of nothing. And how long were you using? Um, I wouldn't say using, because that makes it sound like I was like, like doing crack or something. Yeah. I wasn't doing that. But I would basically never, if someone had anything, I would try it. Oh, yeah. Like, and I like to try weird things that, you know, just like mescaline or like weird shit that people had laying around. But it's kind of weird. I just, I just got, I did too much drinking, and I ended up like kind of living in the third person where friends would tell me what I did. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't remember it too, like a lot of stuff. So, so does it feel like a dream? Like well, you what? know it's like the blackout, I'm sure. Like where someone tells you how much of an asshole you're being later? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I can't say that because my mom's listening. So I was just so sick of it, and I didn't want to be that guy anymore. So. Yeah. So that was your motivation? You were just like, I don't want to be this guy anymore. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest that into learning. Pretty much. Just so what other, things, energy to that. what other things do you like to study then? Since you, you're talking about like biology and stuff, science. I, I, I'm just lot. really into science and a lot of and, and into a lot of um, religious stuff, like the the big picture kind of thing. Like what kind of religious stuff? Like what we were talking about. Like oh, like dying. Well, yeah, just the idea of like there not being a god and why I think it's okay. To, mm-hmm. It's okay to believe that, just like it's okay to believe there is one. And it's a touchy subject for people, but whatever, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's interesting. You ever read about Frederick Nietzsche? Yeah. Do you, like, know, are you familiar with a lot of stuff? He was the, I mean, his most famous idea is, like, God is dead, and it's kind of hypocritical because he himself didn't believe in God in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those, it's one of those things people use to try to make it look like, you know, Einstein believed in God, and Hitler was an atheist, and all that kind of stuff, and none of that's true. So does this tie in with Strata? Thanks to Eric for coming on the 